Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective perspective. Going, going, good, good to go. It feels weird like talking in the microphones without the headphones. Like I've never, I haven't done this yet. And and I just want to point out, you're the first person I've done this in this studio with. Like this, this is the first podcast in this studio. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I pretty much just brought you on here to talk about myself, and that's that was my first topic to talk about. So, what what else would you like to know about me? <laughs> you're so nervous right now we i don't can, even know what to say we can restart if you want or no, you would, it's okay you want to keep going yeah that was that was like adorable that was hilarious that was awesome <laughs> you just you like opened your mouth and nothing came out <laughs> that was awesome that was okay well my main my main goal i will say this like my main goal whenever i do this shit is to make people feel as comfortable as possible so if there's anything I can do to achieve that goal or make you feel a little bit more comfortable being on, like being on, I mean, the things recording us right now and being like documenting your voice as well. Let me know. I'm an open book. So you would think that I would be okay with this since I host my own podcast, but I have no idea what I'm doing. Really? Do you think it's the, the, the video? I don't know. Maybe. Hmm. But like it's fine if you have the video going. Yeah, that's fine. I just because like normally what I do over the phone things. So only occasionally will someone ever pull up the video feed and we'll have like face to face conversations. Well, mm. screen to screen, face to face. You know what I mean? So I don't know. It's weird. So it's there's a there's a very high level of uh of eye contact with this. It's yeah. a it's it takes it's it's interesting. <laughs> it's. So I, I get that. I get that. I feel like I can't look anywhere else except for straight on your face. Yeah, right. I'm just looking at your uh, faded purple hair. Mm. And that was that was not a mean thing. That was that was. I know, just an but observation. I just, I'm not okay that it's faded already. It makes me sad. What, what I've noticed though is like over time doing this, you will establish rapport, and then it's like time ceases to exist. Like it, it's like time just kind of dissipates, and it's a very like timeless experience. Once you, like, really get in, like, a deep conversation or a good conversation doesn't necessarily have to be deep. Just, like, you get in the middle of a good convo and, like, an hour can feel like 10 minutes. It's crazy. That's what I think is cool about, like, your type of podcasting. It's it's not as thought through beforehand. It's really just whatever flows and that comes to mind. And for me, whenever I do mine, it's just like very straightforward, very much I have a plan. And if that plan doesn't work, then I try to make slight changes. And other than that, it's really the same. So So give like a little overview of what your podcast is. Right. Um, So I work for a company called Book Scouter and they have me do this podcast called The Studentpreneur Show, uh, all one word. And we talk about um, essentially entrepreneurship and talk about different businesses and we talk to different entrepreneurs that are students as well um, and how they've been juggling their life as being a student and being an entrepreneur and owning a business and having to essentially be an adult whenever you're still not all the way there, which is a really difficult thing to do. But a lot of people surprisingly do it, and they're really successful. Wait, so they're specific – like, this is specifically for entrepreneurs that are also going through some form of education? Not necessarily, because any entrepreneur can listen to it and take that advice. It doesn't matter what age you are, because we talk about the essentials of basic marketing, talk about, like, different platforms that exist, like, what, what type of businesses you think will be the most successful, which a lot of them say tech businesses are, which is a lot, a lot of what I interview – um, Our tech have, tech businesses are primarily pretty. I mean, they're lucrative if they're effective, but not necessarily. Like it's kind of risky, right? Everything is risky, no matter what direction you take. Um, <laughs> but it's just more likely for a tech business to be more successful. Although, like ninety five percent within a five year range, businesses don't survive. Okay. So it really depends on how hard you work into putting in your effort for your business. That's a crazy stat. I know, right? I've heard that before. That is absolutely mind-boggling. 95% in, within five years, businesses don't survive. Yeah, they just they just die right off. 
And one of the guys at an interview, he told me he created a business that was a tech program. It was a platform, and it allowed students to find local things to do in their area, which I think would be great for somewhere like Springfield because we don't have a ton of things to do, at least I feel like, except for clubbing, which like, you can't do that every single night of the week. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, you can, but I, I do. <laughs> I do, and it's how I live my life. Hedonism like till the death of me. <laughs> but... Yeah, I don't know. He said that he worked really hard on it. He had it for a year and a half, and then he just kind of, like, let it die. Like, literally a couple weeks ago, he killed it off, and he was trying to develop it into something else. But, again, only lasted a year and a half before it, it died off. And those are just, like, an example of those types of things. Sometimes those businesses don't work out, and other times, like, capitalism fails us. And that's just kind of how it goes, because it usually runs for big corporate com- companies rather than working with small companies. Yeah, I feel like I feel like those small companies could take a fair share of the market share though as well. Oh yeah, for sure. If they have the resources to do so, like with accelerators, I feel like that it can be a hu- be a huge benefit for them. Do you, do you find um does the very few entrepreneurs I've like encountered, I find their energy to be like very magnetizing and simultaneously oh, like yeah. it's it just like hypes me up like it gets me going they're always super passionate about what they're doing i have not met a single entrepreneur that is just crumbling and they don't have any passion at all for whatever they're doing because it's their it's essentially a passion project it's whatever they want it to be and it's something that started within their heart whether it was a thing that they experienced in their life or like a personal a problem yeah, exactly and they take the steps forward to fix that problem because it's what they want to do and they know other people will eventually catch on to whatever their niche is that's so cool you're the like i know i told you this before but you're the only person that i know that has a podcast besides myself that's just like that's so cool and you, it for you it, it happened kind of by chance through a work opportunity yeah. But like I said, I think that altered the course of your life. Like this could I, I would really stick with this. And the fact that it's like still here in the same city that you're gonna be going to college at, I would stick with it. This could like really change the course of your life and you can make some really solid contacts. And but also what I think is cool about it is that even if I didn't stay here in Springfield, that I could literally go anywhere and still work with the same job because other people that work within the same company are all remote work. And really? they can do uh, Zoom video calls and have conferences that way. So I could have meetings with my boss over the phone and not ever have to see him in person, which is crazy. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. It's super cool. <laughs> wow. That's that's really something. Cause like I said, I, I really do believe that. I think that this has the – like if it hasn't already, you're like what, like 10 episodes in or something? Yeah. This really has the opportunity. Like, this is an opportunity to alter the course of your life in a really positive way. That's kind of what I'm hoping it'll do because I didn't know if I wanted to do something entrepreneurial with my life or not. And I do have an idea and I have a business model that I would love to try out. I just don't have the resources at the moment. But if I were ever to get there, I have what I need information wise to help get myself started and get myself off the ground, which I think is really cool. Okay, absolutely. And plus, like, have you found if you ask, like, the, I don't know, if you ask 10 entrepreneurs the same question, they all kind of have their own different take on it, different ways of kind of viewing it? Well, surprisingly, a lot of them have said time management is something that they've all struggled with. And I feel like that's really important to realize because every single person that I know has a poor time with with time management. No matter how perfect they are in organizing or organization or anything like that, the time management is something that you can't necessarily always control. So that's something that you always have to take in consideration whenever you're doing projects and then also pri- uh, prioritizing things over the urgency of things, which a lot of students say that they also need to focus on. Yeah, there's a lot of inevitable chaos that's exactly. going to result in life. So, that's, yeah, that is, that's a really good point. Things pop up. Life is sporadic something i've gotten significantly better at but it's it, i don't think it's ever anything you can like perfect yeah it's that's kind true. of an art time management's kind of an art in its way and if people can do it if people can follow that time as strict as possible like kudos to you because i don't know anybody who can be absolutely 100 percent perfect at time management all the time like even some days you just need a break from that it's balancing that chaos and that order because yes. yeah exactly. i i know i really i 
thrive in the environment of kind of more sporadic. I like to like plan my day, like maybe like the morning of or the night before. But ultimately, I mean, uh, I don't know. I'm, I don't work very like industrially whenever it's like very orderly, like very this time I do this, this time I do this, this time I do this. Like I do it to an extent, but I like to keep that kind of loose too. But regardless, it's still a struggle. It's an ongoing struggle. No, I think that's weird because I used to be that way where I wanted ev- I wanted to know everything at the exact time that we were doing it, and I wanted to know how each plan was going to go. I wanted to know the future before it happened, which is just not logical. It doesn't make any sense to do that because things cha- uh, change and happen all the time, and there's no way that you can control that or predict that. And I think it's crazy that some people think that they can play God and they can know exactly what's going to happen at any time because – like we talked about earlier, you can die at any second. Anything can go awry. You could get in a car accident, break your spine, die, or have be paralyzed or anything like that. And it's just crazy how everything can happen for a reason and you have no control over it. Absolutely. Yeah, we're limited. We're limited as fuck. And people like to reassure themselves that it's like, yo, I'm in control of my own life. I'm in control of my own destiny. But ultimately, like, yeah, you are. Like, you have sovereignty over your own decisions that can eradicate a lot of uncertainty but ultimately like you gotta you you can only just like mitigate the potential for not achieving what you want to achieve yeah and i mean there are so many opportunities that can come your way but it's totally up to you to also make the decisions for new opportunities to come into your life So, like, whenever I tore my Achilles, I thought my life was done for. I thought I would have nothing to live for, that volleyball was my entire life, and now it was gone. And over time, I realized, actually, being in that sport and being as competitive and passionate as I was about it, it kind of tore me apart because I was constantly having the need to be perfect and to push myself to be the best, and I would constantly be blaming other people instead of focusing on my mistakes to realize like how much I can improve myself on that Mm -hmm. and losing that ability to play volleyball I learned from watching on the side of the court like there's things that I don't see that you can see from the sidelines and you're helping your team out by telling them hey there's this shot open go ahead and take that shot and you can get a kill and win us a point or whatever it is if they start to tip the ball and you can dig it up in time like telling them what's going to happen before it happens to the best of your ability. And it's hard to read the court whenever you're actually playing. And it's really easy whenever you're sitting on the sidelines, which is crazy because I never even noticed that before. And I wouldn't even play for half the set because I was only in for front row. And I just thought that it was crazy how that works, that I never noticed the small things because I was too busy worrying about myself and worrying about how I was doing instead of focusing how is my team doing? How are we doing as a collective? Yeah, what a perspective shift. Yeah, it was it was absolutely wild. That's pretty cool. That's kind of an art in itself too, is uh, figuring out your own, figuring out a new beginning within an end. Yeah. Something else ends, then you, it's like a new opportunity for something else that could potentially be beautiful as well. For and sure. also that perspective, because I mean that's a life lesson too, which is a huge part that you get it, like a huge reason. I would assume that like why parents put kids into sports, like amount of, like the amount of self growth you must have experienced from volleyball. I know with me like with soccer and then trying like an individual sport as well like jujitsu. Like the, it just it teaches you things. It puts you it puts you you like discover new parts of yourself whenever yeah. you're exposed to those those unknown worlds. Because, like, I played sports my entire life, and it wasn't until I started playing volleyball that I realized that I actually had a passion for something. I had never felt that before, where I actually What an wanted, important lesson, too. I know. That's fucking important. Like, once you lose something that can change your life forever, you have to figure out another way to change your life forever. And that's when new opportunities come your way, and you have to decide which path you're going to take. So... I feel like I, I, for that exact reason, maybe maybe it's the passion, maybe it's the meaningfulness, the fulfillment, whatever, but I've always chased meaning for that exact reason. And I, I like having some sense of an understanding that there's going to be some chaos and some struggle and like inevitably, like there's going to be some struggle, but I still find that a lot more fulfilling than like chasing pleasure because I don't think, I don't think p- 
pleasure really equates to like happiness if that's like the end goal yeah. like meaning is a lot more fulfilling and sustainable but that does that comes at the cost of sacrificing something in the present as well for sure and i think another thing that a lot of people do whenever they're super passionate about something they forget that other things can exist that they are allowed to have other things that they can enjoy that may not be tunnel as vision yeah, it's crazy. And I'm just like thinking about it. I did volleyball forever and I had no other hobbies. I had no other passions and I'm in limbo right now. I don't know what I'm trying to do. I don't know what I'm passionate about yet. And this has been over a year since, well, about a year since I've had to stop playing and I don't know what I want to do. And whenever I start college, I want to start getting into volleyball again because I loved it so much. I mm -hmm. loved playing. It was great. But I need to find another hobby. I need to find another thing that I love that's also just fun. That's not going to stress me out. That's not going to make me freak out about what other people think about me or how my performance is. That's just something that I can relax and enjoy. Try cool shit. I just don't know <laughs> what to try. That's the thing. Try everything. That's my take. I don't know. <laughs> like if, it, if it seems cool, like remotely cool, like in the slightest fucking way, just go for it. I think maybe that's why I decided um, – on my birthday, my 18th birthday, that I wanted to go clubbing. I wanted to see what it was like to go to, like, a party because I'd never really done that before. Mm -hmm. And that was something new to me, and it was so much fun. Like, even though there weren't a lot of people out because it was a Friday night, it was super fun. And I got free drinks, and I got to dance, and I got to hang out with a couple of friends, and it was awesome. And that was a new experience for me, and I feel like that's kind of a hobby thing for me now is going out because um, I don't – do it very often and whenever i do it's like it's an event it's right. not just oh you're just going out like no it's an event for me it's like i, I like that it. perspective too because yeah. then you get desensitized and it doesn't mean much if you're like going out every single night exactly. i agree i think it, it's a lot more fun too plus if you're if you get me hung over like i was today <laughs> uh it sucks it fucking blows like and i i just feel like mentally delayed i don't feel i don't feel like i can articulate my thoughts nearly as effectively as like Whatever I'm like, was sober the night before. Like I just, I just don't feel like uh, that for whatever reason. I feel like I, I daze out a lot, like mid thought, mid conversation, like in the middle of talking, and I hate that. I hate that. But I, I get what you're saying. Uh, see, like I kind of zoned out there a little bit. I'm right. I'm back on track though. This train's back on the tracks. But no, uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. And again, I lost it. I lost it. No, I really do. I feel like mentally delayed. Like that's what I hate about a hangover. I don't know what yeah. your experience of a hangover is, nope, but like I've never had a hangover. See, I I don't feel I feel a little bit shitty. Sometimes I feel really shitty, but I I feel relatively shitty, but my brain feels laggy. That's yeah, my thing. It feels sense. like my brain is like behind and I'm way more spacey. Like it I don't like it and they say alcohol kills brain cells, so and I I feel like I'm like I experienced that. It's only whenever I drink too much, and last night I was very, I drank too much, so. I feel like that happens to me whenever I don't sleep either too much or too little, and then I just, I feel out of everything. Yeah. And it's, it's messed up, like how the smallest thing can do to your body, whether it's an hour that I didn't get of sleep or three hours over amount of sleep, it totally fucks me up for the whole day, or even sometimes the whole weekend. And it just throws me off my course. I've never understood the people that can run like four hours. I don't get it. At Some people all. just force themselves. I, I know a lot of people they'll get in the habit of like not sleeping very much, and then they substitute that with like their their antidote is to just take Adderall, or, like yeah. take a lot of stimulants. Like I've just never like coffee or like think how unnatural that is. Think that's how unnatural weird. that is. It fucks up your body super bad, and that's probably why people are not living as long anymore. I feel like there's a lot more people that are dying younger. Like even though. Do you have data to support speaking? that? I feel like I no, feel like people. Oh, I see what you're saying. I okay. say like even though the data says that people are living longer, like just by genetics or whatever. Once our generation or uh, the millennials they go on to whenever they're passing, we've done so much fucked up shit that they're gonna die younger than what people are dying at today. Yeah, now. but to be fair, like I feel like we don't know anything that our parents' generation was doing and the the generation That's before true. that. 
because I definitely understand like with the whole cigarette thing and things like that and the large consumption of alcohol and how crazy that can mess up your body. But people also do that for fun nowadays. Because I think that in the 1800s they consumed there. Were, I, I don't remember the exact stat. I'm not gonna be able to like mm-hmm. throw out like the numbers, but it it was ridiculous. All I can think about it is was Benjamin ridiculous. Oh, and 1700s. Him orgies and him getting drunk at the bar. Ben Franklin had orgies? Oh, fuck yeah. Have really? you heard about that? No, I, like, I need to. I wish France, I heard this. Whenever he was in France, they would have these massive sex parties, and he would be at them constantly. He had a new woman all the time. He would fuck with different women all the time. Like, it was a thing. Really? Whenever he went to the bars, uh, whenever they were writing the new constitution, he would try to spill the beans about it so people would have to like go with him to make sure that they that they wouldn't tell that they were writing a new constitution because it was against the law no shit yeah and i learned about that like literally last week and i was like holy fuck that's crazy ben franklin had orgies this is gonna be a highlight it's gonna be a highlight (laughs) right there that's crazy though the founding father had orgies wow that's wild he was he was a sex man he was a great president Everybody thinks he's a president. I know. Oh, they're so fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how how old was he though? Because he was he, he was, was like 80, so. yeah he was like the oldest founding father, right? Yeah, pretty sure he was wow. in his eighties. He was in his eighties having orgies. What a legend! What a legend! Wow, I wish I could go back in time just to high five that man. <laughs> Maybe explore the Romans too or something like that. That's just crazy. Save the Mayans. No, that that's crazy. That's that's bananas. That's bananas. There's a whole that's video on it. I can show you about it later. Really? Yeah, seriously. Have you ever had an orgy? No. <laughs> Good one. Yes, you have. I can tell. No. You see, I like that kind of girl. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. Um. Oh, wait, I want to. I want to switch this up. Cause while we're on this topic of like politics. Okay, so two former presidents. I don't know if you've heard this before. I've heard like. The minor stats on this. So I have like a stuffy nose right now, mm-hmm. and it's like really annoying because it's not like like I don't have anything to blow with, and <laughs> I don't know that it's gonna come out. It just feels stuffy. So like I feel like I need to like breathe mid conversation through my mouth because I can't okay. breathe through my nose. Yeah. It's annoying. But two former presidents, JFK, Abe Lincoln. Have you ever heard of like the two like how these two like match up I don't think just so. all these weird facts about them my I might have honestly what would you like to learn I okay I've also heard that Abraham Lincoln might have been gay have you heard that before I've never heard that like he had a wife right yeah cover like, up whenever he was in he was from Illinois correct yeah Springfield yeah, whenever Illinois. he was in Illinois he was a lawyer and there was a man that he had apparently been sharing a cabin with and they were apparently oh. like sleeping together. No way. Yeah. No way. I'm being dead ass. I heard, I read that somewhere. I can't remember where, but I read that somewhere. So Ben Franklin had orgies. A Blake, it was gay. <laughs> That's fucking wild. <laughs> That's awesome. See, like you, whenever you're taught about these people in history class, you see them as such noble, like oh, yeah. perfect individuals that came up with our constitution. Uh, or just d- contributed to American history in some major amazing way. And you just see them as, like, heroes. And you don't think, like, they did some fucked up shit. Because they were people, too. And people do a bunch of fucked up stuff all the time. Yeah. It, it probably is best to glorify them, too. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not taking anything away from them. I don't, I, don't, I don't really see anything bad with orgies if you're doing some great things on the side, too. But... I mean, you do you, man. I don't care. Like, you're just, just whenever you hear about these, like, out of the ordinary, out of the mundane kind yeah. of uh, sexual behavior, and, like, you just never think that, like, a founding father or, like, a past president could ever be that, but it's super normal. And you just don't think that these people, it's like, oh, just not them. It's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy. I mean, there were probably there were probably rapists too. Like there were probably oh. rapists that made some yeah, major. Yeah, Jefferson count- one. Je- Jefferson was one. Oh my God, you're just ruining had, the founding fathers had, for me. He had tons of like mixed children. I don't. I think he actually was in love with one of his slaves. No and way. They had multiple children together, but like he did have slaves, 
and he probably did end up raping a couple of them, but I know he like was in love with at least one. How do you know it wasn't consensual? I mean, if it's a white man with a black woman, that wasn't legal, so they would just be like, sure, you can rape them, I guess. Like, it was weird how that worked, but like a relationship this was is factual. not okay. I've heard it somewhere. I okay. can't remember. I've heard it somewhere. I swear to I've God. I've read it on Twitter. <laughs> I can, no, I don't even have Twitter. I don't even know. But I remember reading it or watching it on something. And there was some historical thing. But, like, I've heard about it. But regardless, he was he was sleeping with his slaves. Yeah. Okay, wow. And he, he definitely for sure had, like, mixed children and was sleeping with his slaves. Like, wow. for sure. That's, like, an actual thing. Wow. Yeah. As far as the rape, though, we don't know for sure. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That's crazy. That's. Wow. Yeah. And again, like, think about you just, JFK you just don't his think wife these people. The time. And Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, exactly. And people glorified him beyond belief. Like, they thought he was the best thing that ever happened, which he was a great president. Like, I'm not going to say he wasn't. But, like, as a person. Mm. Mm. Questionable things. Questionable things. I don't know much about JFK. I know he's a lot of people's favorite president ever. Yeah, that's true. Young, charismatic, great jawline. <laughs> Huge fan of Catholic. JFK's. Oh, uh, was he really? Yeah, he was Catholic. He was the first Catholic president. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. That was a big deal. Mm-hmm. A lot of people didn't vote for him because of that. Really? Yeah. Was that wow? They were typically prosti- uh, Protestant. Protestant. Yeah. Wow. So he was the first Catholic president. I don't even know the difference between, like, Protestants and... Uh, well, Catholics, you have to go through the priests in order to talk to God. Protestant, you can talk directly to God by yourself. You don't need to have someone to go through them. Wait, wait, which which one was the second one? Protestant. Okay, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So you, it's more one-on-one direct relationship with God. Catholics, more like you have to maneuver something. That's the only nuance? And they also... Catholic has, like, 30-something extra books in the Bible than... Like the original Bible, if that makes sense. Sounds like they're the exact same. It's just Catholicism just has more shit. That's essentially how it is. Uh. And then they also hail Mary a lot. Um, Protestants don't really do that very often. Okay. It really depends on what denomination you're talking about. But like my denomination, we don't do that. Wow, that's, that's wild. It's crazy. It's crazy. There's just just thinking, sense. yeah, it just seems like a... I don't know, Catholicism so, like, widely spread at this point in history, so. That's true, yeah. It's just weird to think that, like, that was, like, a big controversial thing just 50 years ago. Well, I think it's because, like, America was really founded on Protestant <laughs> beliefs, so that's probably why it was so, like, out of the blue, because there really weren't a ton of Catholics that existed in America. At the it's kind of like, say, a deal today, like, if there was, like, a president that didn't identify with any denomination, that'd probably be a big deal. Yeah, like probably. the first atheist president, like that—that that would be a big deal. A probably, lot of people yeah. would care about that. I mean, especially morally. Like, I feel like a lot of people would be like, "He's probably morally corrupt. We wouldn't want to have him as president." Um, so that'd be really easy to call him like a Satanist or something too. Mm-hmm. At that point, a lot of assumptions, a lot of little like hasty generalizations at that point. And I'm really—I don't think that we've had another Catholic president since JFK. I'm pretty sure they've all been Protestant. Really? Yeah. Wow. I did not know that. Also, what were the facts between Abraham wow. Lincoln and JFK you want to talk about? Yeah, so Abe Lincoln this is like one of those swipe things on Instagram. Okay. So you got like one picture, and then it just keeps getting weirder. So <laughs> Abraham Lincoln was elected to Congress in 1846. JFK was elected exactly 100 years later. 1946. Kind of weird. Let's dive in a little bit deeper, shall we? (laughs) Lincoln was elected president in 1860. Kennedy was elected in 1960. Both were particularly concerned with civil rights. Still not that weird. Both had, both wives lost a child while living in the White House. Weird coincidence. Both presidents were shot on a Friday. Both presidents were shot in the head. Lincoln's secretary was named Kennedy. Kennedy's secretary was named Lincoln. It's kind of weird. Both were assassinated by Southerners. 
Both were succeeded by Southerners named Johnson. Andrew Johnson, who succeeded Lincoln, was born in 1808. Andrew Johnson, who succeeded Kennedy, was born in 1908. They had the same fucking... Andrew Johnson. They had the same... Like, literally the same name. It succeeded. That, that means, like, president that came yeah, after. after. So yeah. we had two presidents named Andrew Johnson? Um, No, I think the other one had a different name. First name. It says Andrew Johnson for both. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Unless, unless this is, like, typed out wrong. What is Andrew? Which which one is Andrew Johnson in eighteen oh eight or nineteen oh eight? I don't even know who that is. So. Um. I can only pull I'm that like, up. Pull that up on Andrew Google. Right I I wish I I don't have Wi Fi right now, so otherwise I pull this up on my laptop. All right, here, we got more. We got more swiping. Oh shit! There's a lot of swiping to do. All right, so Andrew Johnson. 1908 and 1808. All right, John Wilkes Booth, who was assassinated, who assassinated Lincoln, was born in 1839. Lee Harvey Oswald, who was assassinated, who assassinated Kennedy, also very debated whether it is our own government. You ever looked into that conspiracy? Wait, what? Sorry. Have you ever looked into that conspiracy? Like, a lot, a lot of like very credible people believe that uh, our own government played some role as far as like killing Kennedy. Maybe, maybe. I I don't know. I don't know enough. I haven't looked into it much. But um Okay, Andrew Johnson was the seventeenth president, so that was after Abe Lincoln. Okay. And then um who was after J F K. Um Lyndon B. Johnson. That's who I was thinking of. Lyndon B. Johnson, okay. Lyndon B. Johnson. Still, still last name Johnson. Yes, interesting, exactly. interesting. Kind of weird. Both assassins were known by their three names. Both names are composed of 15 letters. These are kind of like picking at little tiny things. But there are some really weird like similarities too. Yeah. Like, and it's like the fact that these happen 100 years apart. Just th- th- There are some weird things for sure. I'm not denying that. They're also kind of just finding these little meticulous details and like, oh, 15 letters in the assassin's names? Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> just like, <laughs> Lincoln was shot in a the- theater named Ford. Kennedy was shot in a Lincoln card made by Ford. See, they're kind of connecting dots from around. I mean, it's, it's fucking weird. Don't get me wrong. But they're kind of connecting things from Booth and Oswald were assassinated before their trials. A week before Lincoln was shot, he was in Monroe, Maryland. Oh, that is funny. A week before Kennedy was shot, he was with Marilyn Monroe. (laughs) (laughs) That's kind of funny. (laughs) Monroe, Maryland. Lincoln was shot in a theater, and the assassin ran into a warehouse. Kennedy was shot from a warehouse and ran to a theater. Uh, Now, I don't know about... The actual shooting of JFK. I still think there's tons of conspiracies about it, and I don't know if I believe that Oswald actually killed him. Really? Yeah. What do you, What do you think you believe? Well, that's the thing. I don't know, but there's tons of theories that suggest that he might have not even been shot from the warehouse. That he could have been shot from, let's say, the car is like right here, and there was a line of trees and bushes on this side, and that the shot could have come from this way, and that could have what then killed him okay. instead of coming from this direction. Because it's weird how the uh, logistics were. Wouldn't they be able to tell at the point of but if there's where a the car that is? The government is covering it up, and they wouldn't want the truth to happen. Because it doesn't yeah, make yeah, sense. Yeah, but don't you don't you think like if so if he was to be shot like right here in this like left temple, for example, then you'd be able to tell that it's like oh it came from this direction. Like you'd be able to be like it's in this range of where but the that's person the was. Thing. That it came from the the, the source a different direction than what it would have been from the warehouse, and that's proven. I mean, there's a whole video on it that I saw uh, from an unsolved series case. Wait, what's the source? There was it like a YouTube video? Used, yeah. It, it's a, okay. Those are interesting. I'm not. I'm not taking any credibility away. No, but like the source, 
the source itself, like the one who made the video, is BuzzFeed. But they use other sources, like the guy who does the show. He used other sources to back that up, and he has them linked in the video. Okay. Okay. So like, even though it's BuzzFeed, like fuck BuzzFeed, they're horrible. Um, <laughs> Why is that? They're just they're not reliable sources at all whatsoever. Are they just like content machines? They oh just yeah. Get as much content For as possible. Sure. And they're definitely like a totally super left wing. Like they're super biased on everything that they post. Mm-hmm. And they have done slander posts before. So like against the right. Yeah. Okay. So and like I've seen it on people that I follow on Instagram and stuff like that. I think they did one on Joel Patrick. So I was just. I'm just not a fan of BuzzFeed in general. But, like, their videos are funny. I'll watch their YouTube videos. It's not a big deal. Mm-hmm. But their BuzzFeed Unsolved series is actually, like, they have super compelling cases. The guy who does the videos does a bunch of research from multiple resources. And it's really interesting. And I like that. I like that series the most. I think it's super interesting. And they have a, they have it on Hulu as well. It's super cool. Yeah. It's like the, the conspiracy. Mm-hmm. On, on Hulu. They okay. have all the conspiracies on there. Like, they have the actual case, the facts of this case, and then the conspiracies that surround it because they're technically still unsolved cases. Because mm. they have multiple things. Like, they have the Black Dahlia on there. They have the missing case of Bobby Brown or Bobby Dunbar. Um, all kinds of crazy stuff. Mm. Conspiracies are something that I, it, I'm, like, very conflicted on getting into them. Because I've, I've gotten into them and I've started to go down the rabbit hole and I'm, like, this can make me really fucking paranoid. The Kennedy okay. Kennedy's interesting. Kennedy's interesting, yeah, but I'm there's sure. like some things that I could I could just see myself going down the rabbit hole and only the the end result would just me being a paranoid motherfucker. And like I don't know if I want to do that. So I'm uh I'm tentative yet curry like cur- uh, curious. Yeah. I want to say courteous. See, now that's the thing about this series is that they not only do cases like JFK, they do cases where they actually have never, like, they do almost police-style investigations Mm -hmm. because the police have to use theories on to figure out who the actual killer is or whatever. And if they can't figure it out, that's why it's an unsolved case. And that's why that there's theories. Mm-hmm. And there's been theories from officers. There have been theories from, like, other sources, like, newspapers and, like, things like that. Even from family members of whoever was killed or whoever went missing or anything like that. You're very knowledgeable in history. I just like to – I like history. I think it's super fascinating because mm-hmm. there's a lot that we don't know because there's tons of things that have been recorded, of course – but they're not always 100% accurate. There could always be one thing that's off. Or, like, intentionally off, Inten- too. Yeah, exactly. Like, or the, intentionally the off. victors choose to manipulate perception mm-hmm. in a certain way. Because there's no way that World War II was taught the exact same here versus how it was taught over in Germany versus oh, how Germany it was taught in Australia. They don't even talk about it really? anymore. Really? Yeah. They're a German exchange student in my high school. Uh-huh. She said they'd never even learned about it. This is the first time they even talked about it, it was whenever she came here. No shit. Mm-hmm. Th- they're aware of it, though. Obviously. I mean, they have to be. I'm sure, but they don't. They don't teach it. They don't talk about it. I've heard the exact opposite. I heard they're like very. They're ashamed of it, but they're like more like their approach is to teach it and then be like, "This is what we did, and we're teaching you this because we don't want to make the same mistakes That's moving what I into think the they future." Should be doing, but based uh-huh. off of her recollection, uh, based off of her testimony. That's not what they do. Wow. And they just don't even talk about it anymore. Wow. Which, like, it's awful to erase history. Like, no matter how horrible it was, like, yes, America has a lot of slavery issues, and that's how we started, but you can't erase that history. That's extremely important so we don't make the same mistakes. That's mm-hmm. the point of history. That's the point of people recording that type of data. So I don't understand why they would erase it. Because mm-hmm. what if something happens again? What if there's another fascist dictator that tries to take over something and like germany doesn't have a clue because they stopped teaching that type of stuff that happened during world war ii i agree i agree because i mean we're talking about ignorance versus being informed exactly and even if being informed is going to gross you the fuck out by having to i mean like if you if you look at this in the holocaust vic like the the pictures it's it's hard to look at it's difficult yeah it's really fucked up but Ultimately, like, I feel like I'm a better person for, for viewing that so that I could, like, just to know that I would be capable to, like, 
execute those things. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like so would you. Like, any, any human being is fully capable of doing what those Nazis did. And there's also kind of, like, a sense of responsibility that you want to, like, put on your own shoulders. And it's like... I don't, I don't want to ever get that dark. Like it, whether it be my thoughts, whether it be like my actions, yeah. uh, there's just, there's something to be learned there. But now there's another thing that I think that people need to realize. It's not your fault for what happened. It's not this generation's fault for what happened in the past. Mm-hmm. We should not be blamed for what our ancestors did because that was their decisions. And as horrible as they were, you can't put the blame on us. Because that's not our actions. That wasn't who we are as people. So I disagree with you to an extent. Like, I, I, I don't think you should, like, blame yourself and beat yourself up over it. But I think you should take on the responsibility to know that, like, you are capable of doing those things. Oh, and that, yeah, being capable and that you should, for sure. And Just... to know that you are, with that, that capability comes great responsibility to be able to execute positivity and just just good like project good into the world because like the 20th century proved us like how extremely terrible human beings can be to each other to this planet to everything yeah it's 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 mind-boggling that it even happened like you like do you do you you know like what the russian gulags are Mm -mm. Uh, this is something i learned about recently but long story short the russian gulags were like the holocaust over in russia for pretty much anybody who didn't agree with communism, uh, well, I'm I'm like not super informed, so I'm just gonna give a really brief overview of this. This is something I've started to research re- lately, and it's fucking interesting. Yeah. But it, it it happened between the span of I think it started in the 20s, and then it ended. It ended after Stalin. It it significantly reduced, but I don't think it ended completely till the 80s. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna pull it up real quick, but that it's, sounds like it'd be pretty accurate. Whenever Stalin was in power and everything, and the until the German ro- uh, Berlin Wall broke down, so they tore that up. That makes a lot of sense. How long was the Russian gulags? First established in 1919, and by 1921, the Russian the, the gulag system had 84 camps. But it wasn't until Stalin's rule that the prison population reached significant numbers from 1929 until Stalin's death, which was in 1954, I believe. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. I think it. I think it. When did it end? 1960 is when it ended. Wow. Yeah. Long story short, like this, just as bad. And like they, they also like put like real prisoners in with these people, and they pretty much formed like a some form of, like, a hierarchy based upon, like, who was more fucked up and evil. And it's, it's there are paintings that are absolutely atrocious to look at. I forgot who the painter was specifically, but if you pull up... I don't think Russian gulags. I pulled that up on, on Google Images. If you just pull up Russian gulag paintings, that wasn't too much. But there's one specific person, I think he was documented in this book that was written about the Russian gulags called the Gulag Archipelago, written by this guy named Alexander Solzhenitsyn, I believe his last name is. And he, um, so this dude, I, I believe he, he wrote all about the Russian gulags mm-hmm. and like exposed Russia for that. And then also, and I don't know why they don't teach this in school. I, 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 I don't know why I'm like just learning about this at this point in life. But the, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, oh, I think there are paintings by this one individual painter. That or he has his own separate book or something. But I, I pulled those up, and it's disgusting. Like, women getting raped. Like, the women that didn't sleep with the camp officers, they were tortured by being hung next to a tree and like, like this, and then they would let ants run up and eat them from, like, the outside. And then whenever... They wanted the ants to eat them from the inside out. They would do like a pipe up their vaginas and then they would put the ants up in there and they would start eating them from the inside out. Like while they were living. Like the the, the type of torture that these guys did, it is like some of the most fucked up shit I've ever heard in my entire life. Your facial expression right now. It's it's you no, know, it's like ridiculous. It's I I've been listening to this podcast on uh like the Russian K- KGB, and then they also like briefly talk about the Russian gulags, and 
it's by this dude named Dan Cummins, and it is like the, the what they did for torture is absolutely insane. What human beings are capable of doing to each other, it's mind boggling and it's disgusting. But there's something to be learned there, like you said. Like we, I think it's very important to be exposed to this information just to just to know, just to know. And like I think about the Bible when that comes up to my mind, because think about the crucifixion like they did that to other people it wasn't just it doesn't it wasn't just christ and think about what they did to him the crown of thorns the whippings the everything like they spikes hands feet stab him in the thigh or side to make sure that he was completely dead and drain all of his fluids from his body like it's disgusting and if you if you've never seen the passion of the christ i'm scared to watch it but based off of my parents testimonies it's the worst thing that you could ever see. Really? It's completely disgusting and it makes you want to cry. Like that some that people could do that to another person. Mm-hmm. Like it's really that bad. And apparently they did a really good job of like recreating it and like recreating the gore. Yeah. And like just that's horrible. And uh, and in the Bible they only talk about it so much, but whenever you think about it, that it was a thing that happened to probably hundreds, if not thousands, of individuals. And they it was absolute torture. And that's what I think could possibly be the worst thing. Minus the Viking thing where they would like cut open your back and pull out your lungs and your rib cage to make it look like an eagle. Like other than that, While you were alive? While you're alive. They could keep you living doing that? I mean, to an extent. Like that's uh, it, wow. It's That's disgusting. a high level of creativity that you gotta go put into fucking torture somebody. That is ridiculous. Absolutely nuts. I know. I know. In the Passion of the Christ, uh, Mel Gibson, it's his hands that are are nailing in Christ's hands, like putting the nails in, into Christ's hands. And I think there's a lot of like symbolism in that. I wonder what his reasoning for doing so was. I'm not sure. I also heard that the actor that played Christ, it was either him or it was Mel Gibson. They got electrocuted, like they got um, hit by lightning, shook by lightning. After, oh really? Like either after or while shooting that movie. No shit. Mm-hmm. Like, did they live or? I think they lived. Okay. Seems like people that get struck by lightning live like a lot. You think that would Probably. kill you? Yeah. Like, you think that would kill you for sure, right? Like, if you if you first time ever hearing that that's even a possibility, like you you learn what lightning is, and then you're like, what do you think would happen if you got hit by that? It's like, dude, you'd be dead. Like, you'd yeah. be dead within seconds. It's like like it's not even like a question. Would you live? It's like how quick would you die? And my my answer would be like five seconds or less. But I feel like you hear a lot of people that have like been. Well, it's also crazy because it's so it happened so fast that sometimes you wouldn't even recognize that it happened because it's wow. literally like half a second. When yeah, you, like, true. The ground. So how crazy is it that it could even last that long through your body? So. Really, really kill you, or would it not kill you? Like that's, it's really a toss up on how long that lightning stays there. I suppose mm. that's what I. That's what makes me think about it on whether there's a chance for you to live or not. Yeah, I feel like I feel like even just that much force, that much power, whatever. Like you would assume. I mean, I don't have a great understanding of electricity as a whole, but like you, you would just assume that that shit's gonna knock you the fuck out. Oh yeah. It's gonna take you out. I'm sure he had I'm pretty sure he had to go to the hospital. There's no way he was just like yeah, right. walking up like hey, okay. <laughs> He's doing somersaults after yeah. running home to his parents. Just, no way. <laughs> Honestly, I'm down to wrap this up if you want. Did it was I like I I I don't say this in like a like a self deprecating, insecure way, but like I feel like I just feel mentally cloudy right now Mm -hmm. uh, with that like with the hangover and everything and i don't feel nearly as articulate i feel like i didn't i didn't make like points as effectively as i usually do i mean i think you did great (laughs) oh thank you that just means the world to me that sounded really sarcastic (laughs) (laughs) no that's no that's really cool of you to say it it was sarcastic but no i I don't really know that's really cool of you to say because uh i don't know i just it's just really interesting to me like the the physical feeling of I don't know just being hung over I, mean, I think like what you were saying with like being like lack of sleep I think it really really reduces sleep quality mm-hmm. 
and I I know I like my remedy for getting over a hangover is sleeping. Like I sleep a ton after. Yeah. Because I know whenever like alcohol puts your your mind in a state of uh, sedation almost, mm-hmm. kind of like sleeping drugs do. So then therefore sleep quality is dramatically reduced, and then your body's kind of helping like catching up at the end of sleep to catch up on like much needed like REM sleep and and like dream sleep and everything. So therefore, like the sleep quality goes down dramatically. So maybe maybe that's what it is. Maybe I'm just like my mind just feels tired. I have one question. For yes. You. Do you ever remember your dreams? Have we talked about this? I can't remember if we talked about this or not. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if we have or not in the past, but I, I yes, I do. Uh, if if I make an attempt to remember them, like in the morning. So like, I did a little experiment for probably like a few months. I don't remember how long I did this exactly. But I got in the habit of every single morning whenever I'd wake up, I would immediately reach for a journal and then I'd write down my dreams. And most of the time, like most of the time, I, I would dream. But if I do what I do now and I wake up and I immediately start thinking about my conscious life and I'm like, yo, what's, what's like, what should I do today? What should I eat for breakfast? Like, what should I, what should I do with my day? Whatever then I don't remember them whatsoever. Mm-hmm. So, it, uh, but dreams are really, really, really fascinating to me. Oh, yeah. I always, have you heard that, like, that thing where people are like, I wish that you could, like, plug in your pillow and watch your dreams after you dream them. Because think about how crazy that is, especially nightmares. Like, I've woke up crying because of a nightmare before. And it's crazy how your brain can actually make your physical body feel sadness and pain and you not realize it because you're asleep and it's your subconscious. That is crazy. It's like so weird. I just realized you've never woken up with a boner. (laughs) (laughs) That's an experience in itself. Oh my God. I've woken up touching myself before (laughs) and I I don't know how I feel about that. I woke up humping my bed when I was in high school one day. (laughs) I was like caressing it like on the side. I was just humping my bed, but no, no, <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. I've been, and that is a weird experience though. Like waking up from a nightmare and then you're just like bawling your eyes out from something. Mm-hmm. Like, like it, uh, I don't know. Like I, I experienced like a parent loss in my dream or something, or or just some really gruesome shit. Or you're like actually fearful for your life. Yeah. In that dream state. I that's feel like it's crazy. kind of like the same way whenever you like pee the bed in your sleep. Because there have been times when I was like little. I would think about, like, I'm going to the bathroom in my dream, and I think it's actually happening. And then I wake up, and I'm like, oh, shit, I peed the bed. Um, Like, I feel like that's kind of that same type of thing, but it's out of fear instead of out of what you think is reality. Wow, what if every time you pissed the bed as a child was just a bad dream? Or a really good dream. Yeah. Maybe that's why they call it a wet dream. (laughs) I hate you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no that, that's funny that's funny yeah you're like fearful in that dream i wonder why i wonder why pissing the bed is a thing probably just, I don't know. it's probably just a learned thing not to do it honestly i mean i feel like some people like my brother he he peed the bed till he was like 12 i want to say 12 or 13 and he'd have to wear like big kid pull-ups oh really um i was a late bloomer i'll yeah, admit it i was a late like, bloomer he wasn't a late bloomer though it was just because his body would not allow him to wake up whenever he was sleeping. That was my exact problem. And so he had to get on medication for it. So his body, like, whenever he had that urge to go to the bathroom, his body would wake up. Really? Mm-hmm. And, like, our hmm. biological father, he didn't stop peeing the bed till he was 16. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I wonder why that is. It's weird. I think it's part of genetics. And Do you I think, think there's anything, like, any nuances between male and female? I mean, I'm sure there's some. Because I, I was later than my sisters. I didn't know that. That's interesting, though. I feel like, well, girls in general already do tend to bloom earlier than boys do. That's just like But, like, bladder-wise, what are we thinking? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I probably peed, the last time I peed the bed, I was probably, like, in second grade or something like that, which I feel like is kind of older than most people. But I also had boobs in second grade, mm-hmm. so I was already in a weird place. Look at you. Boobs in second grade. What age is that? That's Eight. Eight, yeah. <laughs> wow. It was weird. It was very weird. I still don't have tits. Mm, you have a, a little bit. Mm, I'll take it. Yep. I'll take what I can get. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for that. I needed <laughs> that. I'll just take that and 
you know, stuff it, put it in my pocket and keep that for later. Yeah, Any, anytime I need a little self-confidence, I'll just take it out and look at it and put it right back. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I never thought about that. Just, I think that was my problem, personally, like, mm-hmm. trying to think through why wetting the bed is, like, even a thing. But I feel like my problem was I was just a very, very deep sleeper. Yeah, that's what a lot of it is for a lot of people, I think. Yeah, I just got really in my dreams or whatever. I had a friend punch me in the face in high school, which I don't know why he did that. I don't know why a friend, like, I don't know why he stole my friend. He's still a friend of mine. To my, I, I'm going to his wedding this year. No, he's a really good friend of mine, too. He, and he, uh, he punched me in the face back in high school because I passed out at a party. Like, and it wasn't like a drinking party. It was like just like a sleepover kind of like birthday party. And he punched you in the face. Yeah, he or maybe this is middle school. I think this is middle school. It, yeah, he he said he punched me in the face, and I was sleeping so, like, I was out so much that I, um, yeah, he punched me, and I did not wake up. <laughs> That's weird because I feel like I feel everything whenever I'm asleep. Like, so if someone were to touch me immediately, I'm just like, oh, what's going on? What's happening? Really? Yeah. So like, but whenever I was younger and like I had sleepovers and stuff. I'd fuck with the girls that were sleeping over at my house. Like, I'd have glow sticks. I'd try to stick them up their nose. I'd draw on their faces. I'd get whipped cream, put them on their hands, like, tickle their nose. Like, everything that you could possibly do. Mm-hmm. But, like, if anyone tried to do that to me, immediately I would, like, slap their hand away. Or I'd, like, Can you do that again? Right up. That little karate maybe you just said? <laughs> wow. He <laughs> Slap them away. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> exactly. Wow. That, that's that, That's funny. Just different sleep habits, I guess. Maybe. My mom's is like that. And my dad, if I try to wake him up, like, as soon as he gets woken up, he can't go back to sleep. Really? And I, I feel like that's weird because as soon as I'm I wake up. I'm not that up, way. Yeah. As soon as I wake up, I'll, I might feel eh. But if I lay down and I close my eyes for a little bit, eventually I'll go back to sleep and I'll be fine. But he can't do that. Even if it's, like, pitch black, he can't do it. Wow. Even just waking up for no reason whatsoever? Mm-hmm. Even if I think, like, if I woke up to, like, a loud bang and, I like, my adrenaline got spiked, like, I don't know if you've ever had the experience of, like, going from a sleeping state to a fully conscious state. And not just fully conscious, but, like, within seconds, you are sleeping, you wake up, and you are fully fucking alert, and you're, like, running with adrenaline, your heart's beating. I've actually I don't know if that's, have experience. So, like, w- I think I could fall asleep even after that, depending on what it was. Like, if it was a false alarm and I'm just, like... Like, I figured out after, like, two, three minutes, like, I'm like, yeah, everything's cool. Like, I think I could fall asleep. Um, I did, because what happened was that my dad was doing dishes at one in the morning for whatever fucking reason. And I had a cell phone. I was, like, 13. I called the police on him because I thought it was someone breaking into our house. <laughs> and I was flipping shit. So I hit the closet. <laughs> I'm, like, sobbing. I'm, like, I don't I don't know what's happening. Can you, can, you, can you send help? I'm, like, having a panic attack. And then the cops knock on the back door. My dad goes to open the door, and he's, like, why the fuck are you here? And... He's like, Tang, get out here. And I'm like, oh, shit. I didn't realize it was my dad. And so I hang up the phone, and I'm like, hi. And he's like, why are there police here? I thought you were a, I thought you were a robber. And he's like, you got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> and I was like, I'm sorry. And I was 13, so it's probably not that big of a deal. But You should do that again. You should do that again. Oh, no. He'd be so mean. <laughs> like, are you shitting me? That tone you just used. That's it. That's a female tone I've heard before. I, I don't know what it means. Just not verbal communication. I'm not. Wait, what? Your paralinguistics. <laughs> just your your tone of voice. It was oh, like, okay. Yeah, I was. I don't know. I, like I've heard I've heard that similar tone come out of other females' mouths. <laughs> no, I just thought I'd say that. Okay, interesting. I brought it up, and here we are. We're throwing it out now. Random thought. But are are you down to 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 call this quits? Yeah, that's Close totally fine. Quidditch, Quidditch from Harry Potter, Quidditch. I think that we had a good conversation, so. This is like literally an hour, like an hour flat. Really? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I thought you were going for a high five whenever you did that. I was, oh, I was yeah, getting ready. I, <laughs> I, I, I saw your hand go, but I'm like, I was, I looked away from the screen only to find out you're like scratching your neck. It's like the, the, the handshake, like you got to like do that to somebody and then you literally like do that. Like uh-huh. people used to do that a lot in high school. <laughs> I don't think I've seen anybody do that. Maybe you are old. <laughs> Back in my day. <laughs> Back in my day. All right, cool. Okay. Hitler was into 16-year-old girls. 
I just thought I'd say that. Was that accurate? Yeah, yeah, he was. Wow. He, like, was into, like, really young girls. Which makes sense, because men are typically attracted to, like, youthfulness and appearance. And I feel like it's hard for women. Fertility. Like, once you want a certain age, like, you're fucked. But if you're an old man, like, you can still bang and you'll be fine. Unless you have a heart attack. But other than that, like, you're fine. Yeah, that's the, the weird thing is, like, women's sexual market value goes down as time goes on. Mm-hmm. And then men's only goes up. Or they stay the same. That's what I feel like. It really depends. Yeah, true. Unless they true. have money. If they have money, then it's definitely going to be way higher than if someone who's just like, eh. But also, I don't think, like, college girls are into, like, old men with money. Like, I don't think that's what Some college girls are. want. are. When I was in really? high school, there were a couple of girls that I know that were on this, like, fetish app thing for uh, silver foxes. What's a silver fox? It's basically, like, the male version of a cougar. And they, oh, have, okay. and they have money. Okay. So, like, they would go and get pedicures because these men would pay for pedicures and they would send fit feet pictures and things like that. Like, it was weird. That was when I was in high school, too. Feet pictures? Feet pictures. That's weird. I know. Like, you're, you're in your prime right now. Do you ever think about that? I mean, not, not, like, and it's not like, I don't know, your prime will last for the next few years, but ultimately, like, I, I got until I'm 40, so that's okay. To your 40s? Yeah. I feel like I can I'm have at least one baby when I'm 40. I'm just saying, like, attractiveness. like. Oh, then maybe I'll be lucky than that because my mom's almost 40 and she looks fucking banging, so. Good for your mom. I know. I'm hoping I have those jeans. There you well, go. Well, I mean, I should have those jeans, but I'm hoping they stick with me. You're wearing jeans right now. I'm wearing shorts. Are those mom jeans? Oh, oh you're wearing shorts. Jorts. Yeah. Which, by the way, I was thinking about getting a $35 tattoo. That's not funny. <laughs> That's not why? Because I had my first tattoo when I was sixteen, and it was thirty five dollars on my boob. Is it? Is it like uh, here in Springfield? Yeah. Is it like a place? Brown Brown. Is that a? That's a place like no. notorious for thirty five. No, she's a scratcher. Oh, that's a person. Yeah, her name's Brown Brown. She's a lesbian. She has tattoos, horrible tattoos, all over her head. She has tons of kids, and she was high as fuck whenever she did this tattoo for me. High on what? On weed. Like, PCP? she just smoked, like, a bunch of weed. Oh, really? And, like, it was... It's, is it a bad tattoo? Uh, you sound like you don't like it. You sound I like mean, you don't like her. It's not a great tattoo. It... Because she copied it from the internet. Like, I should have... Wa- I should have not even done it whenever I realized that she was going to copy someone else's work. Because mm-hmm. I don't fuck with that. I want my pieces to be original, or at least as original as possible. Unless it's something, like, generic, like this one right here. Where it's, like... A national, international, known art piece. Oh, that's that's generic. I mean, a lot that. of people have this tattoo. I've never seen that. That's cool. That's that's high definition right there. I like that. I've never seen that. What it, what does it mean? It's uh the hands from the Adam of God on the Sistine Chapel, so the creation of Adam. No, oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, but there's a there was a kid in my high school that had one. Uh, he had the same hands. But he had it on his chest, and it was just, like, the hand part. It wasn't the arms, too. Okay. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have that tattoo. I was going to get it on my collarbone, but then I saw online that someone had it right here, and I thought that would look better. Yeah, I like that placement. That's probably that's probably as low as I would go as far as my arm goes with the tattoo. Mm-hmm. That's what a lot of people say because they're freaked out about corporate stuff. See, I just don't, I don't think that'll matter much in the future. I don't think it will either, which is like, why I'm totally okay with getting tattoos wherever the fuck I want. Yeah. Except for maybe, like, my face or my neck. At least the front of my neck. I, I might get just, my back of my neck. I, w- I don't know if I'd want to work for a place, even if I didn't have tattoos. <laughs> like, just the concept of somebody restricting you of employment mm-hmm. just because you have a tattoo. Yeah. That's stupid. Judgment's a different thing. They might, they might have their preconceived misconceptions about you yeah. beforehand without even meeting you, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're, uh, I don't know, if they're, if they're not going to take the time to get to know you and just not like you just because of that, then that's their problem. Exactly. And, like, think about it. There are a lot of people who have tattoos that are completely competent and can work jobs. Exactly. Like, literally, I think it's, what, one-third or one-fourth of millennials have at least one tattoo. Oh, really? It's something like that. It's a ton of people. No. A ton of people. It's it's become the norm. And it is. Who norm. cares? And so, like, I don't see why being heavily tattooed shouldn't be. It's just like being gay, like uh, just things like that. Like, just get over it. It's yeah. Not, it doesn't affect you. 
it, it'll slowly become more normalized and it has it has mm-hmm. tattoos were at that point i think and and also being like liking guys like if you're into guys that's fine i, I think it's going to be based off personal freedom and results that's where that's where i see the future going like yeah. as far as employment goes it just makes sense also what the fuck do i know but i feel the same way about hair color too like i think it's kind of dumb that people should be like, ah, you work in a corporate place, you should have regular hair color. Well, this is how I express myself. Mm. So I don't know why you should have the ability to take that away. See, I I care more about how do you conduct yourself as a human being? What kind of person are you? Are you an ethically inclined individual? Are you, uh, like, same thing, like, if a girl shaves her head, it's like, I can see that that kind of falls into the same realm. Who cares? Who cares? Exactly. That's, who cares? There's a lot of beautiful women that actually have no hair, like Amber Rose. Like, she's gorgeous. I mean, she's a slut, but she's gorgeous, <laughs> and she has no hair. Point proven. So. Who cares? Exactly. Who cares? I'm just, I'm a big, big fan of the idea of just, you do you. Mm-hmm. You do you, and, like, be a good fucking person, and make a positive impact in this world if you can. At least attempt to do so. Yeah. That's what I care about a lot more than... Physical appearance, that's superficial that's bullshit. Way more important, yeah, yeah. To be a good person. That's why I'm the greatest person you probably know. You are pretty awesome. Thank you. I know. <laughs> you don't have to remind me, but I remind myself every morning. Right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> On that note, do you have any last words? Um,. I don't think so. Unless you're an entrepreneur and you want to check out my podcast, The Studentpreneur Show. I'll listen. I'll listen. Okay. Send me your favorite one, highly recommended one. Um, The, the one that I was showing you earlier mm-hmm. uh, with Savvy Leisure, uh, the Forever Home Friends. Like, it talks about the advantage of a Kickstarter. That's what it's titled as. It's really good. And I'm, I'm really enthusiastic. She's really enthusiastic. It's a very positive, good vibing type of interview. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's what I'd recommend. Nice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll listen. I'll listen. Yay. Cool. Well, this has been fun. I enjoyed this. Yes. What did you think of the experience overall? It was, it's just, not as scary as I thought it was going to be after I got into it. So everybody says. Because like, especially since I know you so well, like, oh, I mean, so well, but as much as I know you as a person, like mm. I really appreciate that we were able to dig deeper and get to listen to each other better throughout this experience. Yeah, well said. I, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Uh, so I've been I've been trying to like get better at persuading people to come on here, and I've gotten pretty effective at doing so. But with that being said, I'm trying to get like more persuasive and like better with just just persuading people. What would you say? Like what what testimonial could I be able to kind of like not quote you on, but like. Whenever I tell people, hey, you should do a podcast, then I could be like, yeah, this is this is why. Well, I think that based off of our conversation and what from what I've heard from your other podcasts, something that you talk about will help someone out there. Like, so no matter who is listening, there's always something that someone can take away from it. And that's what, like really interesting. And that's what I would use to t- tell people. I'd be like, hey, like, just so you know, you're your words are important and someone will want to listen to them and someone will want to use whatever advice that you have or whatever words of wisdom that you bring to the show. I've never thought about it that way. I've never thought about it that way. So like almost tell them it's like, Hey, how often? Cause this is true. This is true. How often does somebody ask you to give you a platform to express your opinions, your ideas, your thoughts, viewpoints on the world. Yeah. And they're willing to fucking listen to you. Exactly. And, and have a discussion, which is so much better because then you can always dig deeper and realize that you're finding something else about yourself, mm-hmm. not just finding out something about other people. Yes. Yes. I like that. I like that. I've never thought about that. Go you. That's a <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. I like that. Well, yeah. cool. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. You're officially the 116th guest, so. Ooh. Yeah, working, working up. Do you think you'll ever have me back on, or do you only do I, get one guest once? No, no, I do recurring guests. Like, excuse me, uh, pretty frequently. So yeah, if you want to, I'm down. 
I think that'd be so much fun, actually. I I'm had down. a really good time, actually, today. I, I could see you, like, uh, and I, I see this reoccurring theme a lot, but, like, I, I saw you get more comfortable. Like, as the experience went on, you're just, like, you just got more chill. More, like, just, uh yeah, just comfortable with the, with the experience. So. Yeah. Appreciate it. And it was cool to see, like, that, that growth within yourself. It's cool to watch people because you, you literally see them. I usually try to get them talking about themselves, and that's what I did with you. Yeah. And it worked. And you fell into my trap. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't I try to like, I don't know. I usually start off talking a lot and like maybe the first two minutes or something. I'm mainly the one talking, but then I just ask them a question about themselves and then usually spurs up conversation. Cause I whenever you start talking about your own podcast, you're like, Oh, I'm knowledgeable about this. I feel confident talking about this. I'm passionate about this. Therefore you started talking, you start talking. And once you, once you start talking, expressing your thoughts and opinions more, like you, that's when you, the comfort comes. I feel. Yeah. So wait, did I achieve that goal of making I you feel more so, comfortable? Yeah, you cool. definitely did. Like it was, I thought it would be way harder for you to do that, but it wasn't like, mm-hmm. it just came pretty naturally. So good job. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's a, that's a skill I've gotten a little bit better at. It's, I'm, I'm consciously trying to work on it and improve upon it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll probably, I most likely will have you on again. Why not? Yeah. Cause I'll, I'll be, I'll, we'll be in the same city for the next six months. I just thought of that. So that's yeah, true. yeah, definitely. Yeah. I don't know why. Whenever you asked that first, originally, I was like, I was thinking, because I was supposed to leave Springfield for, and like go back home. And I was like, I, I forgot that like in the fall as well. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I'm down. Let's do it. Okay. And we, we can always, we can add two more people. We can add one more person. We can just do us two. Like I, I'm cool with whatever, whatever. Okay. Like, and I, the really cool thing about doing this is you get to meet random people. Um, this is something you could also like implement to your own. I know you have kind of more of a theme, but also with that being said, you could do this playing along your own theme too because it's it's yeah. beneficial but people okay, I'm, I'm jumping all over the place people will go out of their way to where they're like obviously they meet me and they're like that guy's fucking awesome like it, obviously so they're like hey i have this friend who i also think is fucking awesome so then just for being fucking awesome and having this podcast i get to meet more people that are fucking awesome <laughs> but people really do they, they feel this like need to reciprocate and also like reconcile some relationship that they see me like getting along with or, or pre- present me with like a new a new individual and be like yo like this person is cool i think you'd like him yeah and then through that i've made a lot of cool friends so okay it's That's cool good. but with that being said you could do the uh you could do the exact same thing and just kind of be like vocal about like the fact that you have a podcast and because i bet i'd be, you'd be surprised with how many people they know that are people that are starting their own businesses like i, I got a buddy who started uh one, I, I know the guy who started the fidget spinner trend. I grew mm-hmm. up with him. And then another guy that went to my high school, he started, uh, oh, what's the name of the company? Something, Wholesome Pride Pet Treats? Some, like, they're in, like, Walmarts. They're something Pet Treats, some kind of Pet Treats. And they're very unique. They're like, uh, oh, what are they? I don't know much about the business. But I, I know the guy who started it. So okay, cool. Well, you should definitely Wholesome them. Pride. I think that. I think that's... I think that's his name, but I I could give you a contact okay, if you yeah, want. Okay, yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, so, cool. Yeah. Any last words? Uh, no, I don't think so. Cool. Let's end this BS. Uh, where did I click? I right, click this. All right. Peace.